make simple, healthy, delicious meals that are salt, oil, and sugar free. First of all, welcome everybody and happy new year. And I hope you guys have all had a wonderful time celebrating the holidays. And I want to welcome Aaron, my buddy, to the show. Hi, Aaron. It's been so long since I've seen you. I know. It's been a while. I know. How have <laughs> you been? How was the holidays? It's good. It's busy. Busy? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, busy is good and good is good. So, all right, guys, we're going to... I missed you. I missed you, too. And I <laughs> miss my audience, too. Um, but before we get started, a lot of you know that on... December, Christmas Eve actually, my Instagram account was hacked and they managed to take it over and they changed my email, changed my password, did all of that. So I no longer have an Instagram account. And I bring that up because some of you are still asking me if I do have an account and I do not have an account. The latest scam that these hackers are doing is telling all you guys that my hacked account is retrieved and I have it again so that you guys can start following them. I want to warn you guys not to do that. I will, when I decide to come back to Instagram, I will personally let you know and I'll make a YouTube video and I will personally let you know that that account is active and is correct. But for right now, I beg you, please do not respond to them. So many of my friends have gotten hacked because of me and I feel terrible that they've lost their accounts. Some of these people had 9,000, 10,000, 15,000 followers and I am just like beyond myself that, you know, I wish I could have stopped it. But it's happened, it's done, but so for right now, please do not follow me on Instagram. Do not accept anything from me Instagram. I am not asking for money. I am not starting a food line. I am not starting a clothing line. Nothing. I have not posted on Instagram since December, way back in December. And now they're posting on my behalf in January. So it is not me. I hope I've made this clear. And I don't know if there's any questions regarding this, Erin, but let me know. Yeah, but I want to want to let you guys know they ch have changed the name a few times. So right now, the newest name they're using is underscore healthy cooking with Shada underscore FA. So if you are currently following that account, make sure yeah. that you um, report them in the top right hand corner there's three dots if you click on it a pop-up screen will pop up and you can put report and it'll say uh, report account and it's pretending to be someone else and someone I know and submit that because the more reports they get then they can actually take action against yeah. the account and close it down because um, yeah they are pretending to be Shada they even have posted two new photos, one of a bowl of food and one with her and her mother, and that's not Shada posting it. No, that's so, not me. So block it, uh, or re first um, report, it. report it, and then block it so they can't send you anything, um, and unfollow them. So, thank you guys, thank you for following me. Anyway, now, to the big celebration. I am so excited because I cannot believe that I've had my weight loss and I've kept it off for 10 years. And for me, that is a huge task. In the past, I've always lost weight, but I was only able to maintain it at the most, maybe six months to a year. So for me personally, it's a huge win that I was able to do it and I'm continuing to do this. And one of my biggest joys is to help you guys achieve the same thing that I'm achieving. So that's why the YouTube channel started, the whole website started, and that's what tonight's all about, uh, is for me to talk to you guys about some of the questions you may have, some of the struggles you may have, to help you navigate through this, and to do, you know, and I can only share with you what I did and what worked for me. What's really cool is I've got like 27 questions from you guys and I'm going to go through those. Erin is mic'd up so you guys are going to be very excited that starting this year <laughs> she is going to be mic'd up so you guys can hear her so I'm not getting emails saying we cannot hear our beautiful Erin. <laughs> you guys will now be able to hear her great. 
Um, so please make sure that you type in the chat box your questions and she will let me know and I can be answering those questions. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions right now or should I go ahead and start? No questions yet, so go so ahead. Go ahead and start. <laughs> so when somebody, when somebody asked, how did I get started? Well, one morning, and I don't know if this person has um, seen me speak before or tell about my story. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but just to give you a general idea, I remember one morning getting up and saying, I've had enough. I was sick and tired of literally being sick and tired, and I was going to do something about it. So at the time, I lived in Los Angeles, and I decided to come home to visit mom in Orange County. Mom loves to listen to PBS. She's always got PBS on. There's always something she's listening to. And on that particular day, when I came home, she was listening to Dr. Furman. Now, mind you, prior to all that, I had done raw food. I have, I have tried all sorts of diets and whatnot. So I was sitting at the table on the computer and my mom, very gently, she said, you know, why don't you listen to this guy, Dr. Furman? I think you would benefit from him or you would really like what he's saying. And I said, yeah, 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 okay. Well, as I'm working and I'm listening to him, I'm like, oh my God, this guy is really good. He makes sense. And what he's saying is to eat a whole food, plant-based diet. Um, and, and he's not ta telling me to eat powders or frozen foods that they've already prepared nothing crazy and I thought I'm gonna look more into this so the reason that I got started was literally thanks to my mom um, for making me listen to Dr. Furman and then from there I went to one of his conferences and then that just led on and led on because they always say that when the student is ready the teacher will appear and I guess I was ready because everything started to fall in place. You know, I met Dr. Furman, I met Chef AJ, I met John Pierre, I met Dr. Gold. I mean, it just, it just snowballed. So to answer your questions, how did I get started? That's exactly how I got started. It was because of listening to Dr. Furman on PBS. And for those of you that are not familiar with Dr. Furman, I really strongly recommend that you check him out, check out his website, check out his YouTube videos. He does come on PBS an awful lot and he, he gives a lot of lectures and they're wonderful. And so that's how I got started. So I hope that answered the question. Um, the next question is, what's your typical meal? My typical meal from now um, that I, I'm in maintenance mode to when I was losing weight has not really changed. I still eat vegetables for breakfast, but I only eat, back then I was eating on a regular basis, I was eating vegetables for breakfast. Now I've noticed that I don't really get hungry um, until much later in the day. So that has changed. Every now and then I'll still have some vegetables for breakfast, but if not, I typically go to lunch and dinner. My lunch is always much bigger than my dinner. That's where I eat the majority of my starch and whatnot, the heavier foods. And I have an, a very large salad. I learned from Dr. Furman that salad is your main, is the main dish. And he, and I, and I believe him. So typically I will have a raw salad. Now in that raw salad, it could be about four or five cups of raw salad. It could be, I add steamed vegetables to that sometimes. I will add uh, beans to that. I might add oat groat to that. I might add quinoa to that. But it's always either a bean or um, a rice or something. Some kind of starch goes in there. Um, or it could be just maybe um, a I take potatoes and I air fry it and I, and I chop it up or I'll just, you know, have the potato. So that's typically a lunch meal with, of course, fruit. And typically I like fruit in my salad. That's how I like it. But you're certainly welcome to have it on the side. Now dinner is typically a little bit lighter. So dinner could be 
a salad and steamed vegetables and then if i have room i'll have a potato or i'll have squash lately right now is squash season and i absolutely love my winter squashes um, after 10 years of doing this and my palate really changing believe it or not japanese sweet potatoes that i used to love in the past I can't eat those anymore. They are way, way, way too sweet. You give your palate enough time, you will neuroadapt. Your flavors are going to change and you're going to notice that some things that you liked in the past, you're not going to like right now. So like right now, I am not a fan of Japanese sweet potatoes. What I am a fan of is the purple sweet potatoes. Now those, for me, they're not too sweet and that's what I'll have. So again, dinner is going to be, you know, a lot of steamed vegetables. It could be a bowl of soup, which has black beans and potatoes in it. It could be just a, a potato. It could be, you know, some quinoa in the soup and fruit. And that's typically what I have. So is there any... I see things coming up and that's why I'm asking you because <laughs> I don't want to miss anyone's question. Especially just, if they have a question on the topic that I'm speaking about. Just lots of um, comments. Someone um, put a comment. I started Chef AJ's Regroup program this week. I'm oh, that's congratulations. For breakfast, and I'm amazed at how I'm not craving sweets and staying quite full all morning. That's so true. Yeah, this way of eating is great. So awesome, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. You you you've done wonders. I mean. Between her, Chef, uh, and JP, we're all set. Uh, here is one question um, from Gina. Hey, Gina. Hi, Gina. When you started, did you measure each starch, rice and beans, to equal one cup or one cup of each? No. So you just eyeball so, it? So this is what I love. I love, 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 love about this way of <clears throat> eating. There's no weighing and there's no measuring. So no, absolutely not. I never have weighed my, my starches, my salads at the beginning. I used to because I wanted to make sure, even though Chef AJ said, and you need a minimum of two pounds a day, and that's one pound raw, one pound steamed. I found that if you, the more vegetables you ate, the better and the faster your weight, the weight came off. So I was eating three to four pounds and sometimes four to five pounds when I really upped it up. And then, you know, I got full on the vegetables and then I would add the starches in there. Or if the starches were already in my salad, I didn't measure. I would put maybe a cup of black beans and on top of that black bean, I might add a cup of quinoa to it or brown rice i never measured i don't know you you did the program too did you ever measure anything no i've never measured but you know maybe what you could do if you're like i don't know what a cup looks like yeah you could measure a cup and then you don't have to measure out a cup every time but no. if, you know maybe if you know what it actually like you know measure out a cup put it on a plate and go oh that's what a cup looks like yeah then but I've just never... eyeball it and see how you you know listen to your hunger i guess I've never measured. I see a lot of writing. That's why I keep coming <laughs> to you. Um, what dressings do you use? Do oh, you that's use, actually one of, one of the questions in here. Do you use Walden Farms fat-free dressings? Okay, so my dressings are pretty simple. Let me show you. Balsamic vinegar <laughs> and fresh lime juice. Now, Nathan Gershfeld from Fasting Escape was over here for dinner one night and some of these flavored vinegars and he said shayla you do know that you can't just pour that on and just go go to town with it and i'm like huh you can't what do you mean he goes no because it is this does have calories to it so i started diluting the two and i'll put a little bit of balsamic vinegar and then the rest of it is going to be lemon juice if i have a lot of fruit and i'm talking like grapes pomegranate, tangerines, apples, whatever fruit you want. If I have a lot of fruit in the salad, sometimes I don't even put salad dressing because the fruit itself acts like a salad dressing. So it's really nice. Yeah. So you don't, you don't need to. But I'm a pretty simple gal. And the only time that I might go a little fancier on you per se is if company comes over and I may make a dressing that may have cashews in it, 
but a lot of times I even take that and I substitute the cannellini beans in there so that it cuts the calories and that's what I do but for the most part it's lemon juice balsamic vinegar or apple cider vinegar or rice vinegar some kind of vinegar yeah I use rice vinegar a lot I like um I'll use um the stone ground mustard the salt free oh yeah yeah that one's really good I do not like mustard but I like this one oh I love and mustard. I will mix the rice vinegar the mustard and the lemon yeah. juice together with like a little sprinkle of spices and it's Yep, that, that's all you need. <laughs> but I don't know what the Walden Farms fat food I don't, dressing is. I don't know what that is, but make sure, <clears throat> just because the bottle says that it's fat-free, don't believe it. Read the ingredient and make sure that they have not have added oil or anything to it. Because I know the USDA gives them a little bit of a leeway of how much, um, what percentage they can put in there and still call it fat-free. So make sure you read the ingredient list and there's no hidden fats in there. And you might want to watch out too if you're getting a fat-free dressing. Maybe they put artificial sweeteners. Artificial or, or sweeteners, absolutely. Yeah. You got to watch out for both of those. Um, can you explain the program you're talking about? I'm not familiar with your program. My program? Yep. How do you eat? Oh, it's not my program. <laughs> I just follow what... Chef AJ, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Goldhammer, that's their program. It's, I just follow what, what they say and recommend to eat. Um, so it's basically you're eating a whole food plant-based diet free of salt, oil, and sugar. And you are eating based on calorie density. And you want to stay under, you know, you want to eat the lower calorie dense food, which is vegetables, steamed vegetables, uh, fruits, your beans, your legumes, and your starches. That's what you're eating. Anything aside from that, then you start getting into the higher calorie dense food. So Chef AJ has done a wonderful job. She's got her calorie density chart um, that you can probably go online and you can go online and find it. I know Jeff Novick has a calorie density chart that you can go online and check out as well, but they all talk about that. Dr. McDougall talks about um, the 50-50 plate in his maximum weight loss book that, you know, you take your plate and 50% of that is going to be starches and 50% of that is going to be vegetables. So you could do that. So it is not my program by any means. I learned all this again through Chef AJ and John Pierre. So I hope that explains it. I know Erin's looking for something for you guys that my mom's <laughs> recommending to her. Um, I have no idea. What is this? The California. Yeah, the other one is the California balsamics. Um, thank you, Mom. Um, but again, if you're going to be using these flavored balsamics, make sure that you dilute it with a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice. Um, don't just take the whole bottle and think that it's okay to just pour it all over it. Because again, a little bit goes a long Yeah, way. a little bit. And actually, California balsamics vinegars are absolutely delicious. And honestly, a little bit does go a long way so thanks mom um great questions you guys thank you i appreciate <laughs> Sorry, it i'm trying to read through everything uh do you do any water fasting do i do any water fasting i have done water fasting but i went to true north health center and that's where i did a 10-day water fast i've done it a few times and um but on my own no i'm afraid of doing it on my own because i have um low sodium to begin with and when you're doing just a water fast by I, on my own my sodium typically tanks so i have to make sure that if i do it i have to do it under supervision but what i do in place of water fasting once or twice a week and I haven't done it lately because the weather's been really cold, which is really no excuse. But typically what I do is a fruit and vegetable day. And I've done a whole video. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and I've done a whole video uh, that talks about exactly what I do on a fruit and vegetable day. So I will do that. Or I may just do an all vegetable day period where all I eat is either steamed vegetables and raw vegetables. So I will do that. But as far as a water fast, I will not do it unless I'm under um, Dr. Goldhammer's watch at the True North Health Center. Or if I go to Fasting Escape, 
with Nathan Gershfeld. So that's, that's me. Anything else? Uh, so are you staying under a certain amount of calories? No, no, I just eat until I'm full and I'm satisfied. Now, I'm not going to eat until my pants are like, oh my God, I can't breathe. I have to undo, you know. No, I'm eating until I am comfortably full. And whatever calorie that is, I have no idea what my caloric intake is. Um, Cause I, again, I don't, I don't weigh and measure anything. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. Maybe I should, I don't know, but it's been 10 years and it's working great. So, <laughs> you know, All right. great questions, you guys. Yeah. I think, um, you can go back to your list. We just, okay, we I can put lots of good comments, but no questions. Okay. That's fine. So somebody asked me if I was on any medications. Yes, I used to be on cholesterol medication. I used to be, on, I was pre-diabetic and I was on metformin for a while. I was on a triglycerides medication. Those were the medications that I was on. But thankfully, when I, I went and I visited Dr. McDougall, he took me off all those medications and that was literally 10 years ago. And to this day, I'm not back on any medication. I'm medication free. And I'm happy to report that that three, $400 a month that I was spending on medication is going to good use now because I'd much rather be shopping for cute clothes and shoes <laughs> and, and working on and taking trips with that money. And to be honest with you, I don't want to support the pharmaceuticals anymore. Yeah. I, think, I think the pharmaceuticals are good for when you really need them. I'm not bashing them by any means, but for right now, things like this that can be taken care of with eating a whole food plant-based diet there's no need to take it. So I hope that answers. And did you, um, do you have a fruit and veggie day video on your YouTube channel? Yes, I do. If you go on my YouTube channel and I don't remember, um, if it was a live or a video, maybe you can look that up and you can let us know, but yes, you can go. I've done a video about a fruit and vegetable day, which explains exactly what I do and how I eat and all of that. I wish my Instagram was still up because you could probably find a lot of pictures of a fruit and vegetable day. So um, it was a live. It's called what I eat on fruit and veggie day live number 45. Okay guys. So look for live number 45. If you want to know um, about a fruit and vegetable day. Thank you, Erin. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked what motivates me. So, you probably have already heard me say this, but what motivates me is the fact that my uncle needlessly died having a gastric bypass surgery. And I just wish that I was, he was alive today so I could teach him what I've done in order for him to get healthy. And that motivates me to make sure that I get the word out to anyone and everyone so that nobody, nobody has to die needlessly doing a, a gastric bypass surgery there's there's no there's no need for that yeah so that is a huge motivation for me you know um i always say when you know the best thing somebody can do is to pay it forward for others and that is my goal um my my goal is that i help as many people as i can i reach as many people as i can because the greatest joy i get you guys is when i get emails from you guys and that are thriving and you guys are doing good and I had a little bit of something to do with it to motivate you that just warms my heart so that's what motivates me I just want everyone to get the same results as I did because I know you can do it I know you guys can all have what you want and we just have to put a little work into it and we just have to make a little bit more of a conscious effort to do it right. yeah uh, does eating potatoes affect your tri triglyceride levels? Um, I have no idea because my triglycerides, at one time <clears throat> in my life, my triglycerides were in the seven, 800 range. And now I'm averaging probably in the 120s. So, and I eat potatoes and I, I, I don't know. It hasn't done anything for me. Yeah. But again, but that might be maybe one of the doctors that's a question for the doctors yeah. to answer. Not for me. I can only, I can only tell you today, guys, what I've done and what is working for me. But otherwise, I have no idea. Um, there's some comments about eating too much starch on here. Um, 
Maybe do you want to talk about like the 50-50 plate or? So eating too much starch. Can you eat too much starch? You probably can. You can probably overeat on too much starch. But I found that when I, when me personally, when I ate too much starch, my weight wasn't moving or it was that, but that's how my body acted with too much starch. So, so you what, would maintain your weight? I would maintain my weight. So what, what works for me was doing the 50-50 plate that Dr. McDougall recommends. So it's 50% uh, vegetable and 50% st uh, your starch, whatever the starch may be for you. And what he recommends actually is once you're done eating this plate, if you're still hungry, go back to the vegetables and then go back to the starch. So you're always going vegetable starch, vegetable starch. And that's what I tried to do. And that seemed to work really good for me. And I've been continuing to do that for the last 10 years and I'm still, you know, which is funny because everybody thinks that I lost all my weight that first year and that wasn't the case. I probably lost about 75, 80 pounds that first year and then the rest gradually came off as the years went on, which was kind of cool actually. Yeah. You know, but your body will naturally stop once it gets to the, the weight that is comfortable and what it should be at. Your, your body will stop, so... I guess my body has stopped a little bit because <laughs> I'm still the same. <laughs> Did you ever plateau? Of course I plateaued. Oh, that's one of the questions on here. Okay, <laughs> we'll, 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 an, we'll answer it now. Okay. Um, yes, I did. And in fact, I plateaued for like maybe six to eight months that nothing was moving. And oh my gosh, I was calling AJ. I was calling John Pierre. I was calling Dr. McDougall. I was talking to Dr. Gold, like everybody and their mother. And they're like, just give it time give it time but the interesting part was the scale didn't move but my clothes were getting smaller mm -hmm. believe it or not the scale wasn't moving and my clothes are just going like this they're just shrinking and shrinking and, and i'm going into smaller sizes and actually jp was really mad at me for ever getting on the scale he even <laughs> came to my apartment and he threw my scale out the door guys he literally threw it behind my couch and because he always says scale is for a fish we don't need this scale and he pounded it into my head like what is the scale measuring literally he's right when we get on that scale and that stupid number comes up in the morning why should that number make my day either be a good day or a bad day but it does affect my day and that that's not good and what is it measuring is it measuring water is it measuring bones is it measuring fat is it measuring muscles it makes no sense so we have to get off the scale a little bit maybe maybe weigh yourself once a week but not every day because you're just going to drive yourself crazy and i literally bought these pants that i have on tonight i bought these probably about six years ago Guess what? They still fit. They're still comfortable. They're, you know, and that's the true measure. Um, it's, there, it's, it's an absolutely wonderful feeling that you get up in the morning and you can put something on from five years ago and you're like, oh, it fits. Not a problem. You know? So, yes, I did hit a plateau. After that, the weight did move and I shifted some things. I started, um, I started eating a lot more vegetables. And then I would have my starch. So maybe that helped to, to shift it a little bit. I don't know. I can't tell you. But it finally started moving again. Yes. I can go to my list? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you have support? Yes. I had tremendous amount of support. I had the support of my mom, which meant the world to me. And it still does. Because I had decided to move back home. And my biggest fear was what if she doesn't want to follow what I'm doing? What if she doesn't want to eat what I'm eating? Because having to make two different types of meals was not going to work for me personally. Like that, that just isn't going to work. But thankfully she was all on board. In fact, she was on board 200%. Um, and as a result of me cooking this way and eating this way, she reaped the benefits where she got off of her medications and she ended up losing a lot of weight. So it was great. And then after that, 
my aunt joined in on it. Two of my aunts joined in, all three of them actually. And they're, they're all thriving and eating this way, which is great. And then the best part was my mom started telling her friends about it. And that was so wonderful. So she's telling her friends and trying to get her friends healthy. You know, and I was promoting it to my friends. And my friends were very supportive, and which is wonderful. So yes, I did have a lot of support. I hear a lot of times from you guys that it's really hard for you because you don't have the support. And I really don't know what to say about that, except for try to hang in there and talk to them and truly explain it to them how you really, really need this and you need their support and their unconditional love um, for you to thrive. And I don't know, did you have any problem having support from your husband? No. No. So, no. yeah, Josh, Josh uh, loves all this, so. Yeah, he lost weight. He lost weight. <laughs> and this guy, her husband, he's is already slim. <laughs> and he's very disciplined. That, that I will say about Josh. He's yeah. very, very disciplined. Um, one of you guys asked, were you ever tempted by any food? And if so, what did you do about it? Look, guys, there's always going to be temptations out there. But the longer you stay on the program and the longer you have that laser beam focus and you don't take the, your eyes off the price, the easier it's going to get as you get further, further into it. Yes, the first year was hard. Yes, the first year I was tempted. It was, it was not easy. I remember the first, um, the first class that Chef AJ had, it was a, uh, what's it called? Healthy challenge? No. Unprocessed. Cha I think it was called unprocessed challenge. Anyway, something like that it was the yeah, first, something like that. first class that she had. I can't think of the name the right ultimate now. Ultimate weight loss? No, ultimate weight loss came after. afterwards. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I remember that first night, you know, we were all at her house and she was starting her class. And at the end, after it was done, maybe about two and a half hours later or something, um, she gets up and she had made this chocolate peanut butter cheesecake. And it was all made, whole food, plant-based. You know, she used dates and for the sweetener and she used real peanut butter and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, and she was, good, and she was letting all of us have it, have some. And I'm like, oh my God, this sounds delicious. I was so excited. So as the... As the cheesecake is coming around, as it's getting closer to me, I don't know what happened, but John Pierre and I locked eyes. He never, in all my years that I've known him and I've worked with him, he has never told me, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you gotta do that. He never does. But for whatever reason, that night, when that cheesecake came, came into my hand, I literally, I got it in my hand, I locked eyes with him, and it just went like this. And before you know it, I had passed it on. And I think that was, for me, was a huge defining moment. Huge, because I could let it go. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, that laser beam focus that I always talk about was always there. There was nothing or no one that was going to deter me or stop me from doing it. I literally walked like this. Like I, I, was, I would not look to the sides what others were doing, you know. So that was a real defining moment and I have, and I have kept that. And I used to go out to restaurants and I, my mom would say, well, what did everybody else eat? I'm like, I don't know. She goes, well, weren't you sitting there? Yeah, I was. But I don't pay attention to what others are eating or what they're doing because I'm focused on myself and what my plate looks like. Yeah. So, yes, there were temptations. And if there were temptations, you know, it was call AJ, call John Pierre, call someone, someone to get me off the ledge. One of the things um, that I still sometimes, like I love sushi. And sometimes I will go to the sushi restaurant with my friends. And there's still sometimes I see some rolls and some... Because that was, for me, the last thing I ever gave up was the sushi. I really loved it. And does it tempt me? Yeah, I look at it. It looks good. But do I want it? No. I really, honest to God, do not want it. And if I was given the opportunity to have it, I, I will not have it. Um, one thing that I told myself from the very beginning, and I think this may have helped me along the way, was that I never told myself that I can never ever have something. I always told myself, okay, I, you know what, I don't want it right now. Maybe down the road I'll have it. 
I never told myself I can never ever have it because if I tell myself I can never have it, that makes me want it more. I don't know about you, but for me, it works the opposite. I, it, I'm like, oh my God, I can never have it, so I gotta <laughs> have it now. So I always tell myself, you know what? I'm choosing not to have it right now. And that works for me. Because you're not telling yourself you can never have it. You're not, you're not putting that limit on yourself. You're just telling yourself, you know what? At this time, I'm choosing not to have it, and maybe down the road, if I decide to have it, I'll have it. And that seems to work. So a question, do you snack between meals, and do you snack at nighttime? And what do you snack on? Okay, so snacking used to be a huge problem for me. Huge. So now that's gotten better. I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it, but I'm, I'm saying it's gotten better. Once dinner, I'm done eating dinner, I run upstairs and I brush, floss, clean, water pick, I do all that. Why? Because I don't want to get tempted to come back in the kitchen and to eat something. Now, if I were to snack, what am I snacking on? I always have carrots in the refrigerator. I have fresh fruit in the refrigerator. I have some sort of vegetable that I can go to. Or sometimes I have these tiny little potatoes, the, the little round ones that are, that are uh, what are they called? The butter, butter potatoes, fingerling potatoes. Yes. Sometimes I might munch on that. But for the most part, I am truly trying to cut that habit. Like I said, I am not perfect about snacking in between meals, but I am doing my best to get better at it. But if I am going to snack, it's going to be on fruits and vegetables. Nothing more than that. Do you intermittent fast? Yes. Um, be, and, and I don't do it on purpose, you guys, be, but I'm noticing that I don't really get hungry till about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And then I'll have like my, my lunch and then I'll have my dinner. But lately what I've been doing, um, just because I'm trying to build up my immune system even more, I'm doing fresh green juices every morning. So that's what I'm having in the morning is a tall glass of, it's got carrots and celery and ginger. Um, it's got zucchini. It's got cabbage. It's got, oh, what else does it have? Trying, oh, romaine lettuce. That's, that's what I have in the morning as, as, a, as a green juice. There's no fruit in it. It's all strictly vegetables. And I'll, and I'll have that. And that usually takes me a good you know, hour to two hours to drink because I don't drink it fast at all. Um, but right now with this whole COVID that's going on and I'm just trying to build up my immune system. And the other thing I'm taking is like uh, shots of um, fresh lemon juice, ginger and cayenne pepper. So I am drinking that in the mornings as well. Okay, back to my question. Mm -hmm. We're only on number eight, guys. We've got like 27 <laughs> of these. Um, so somebody asked, what do I do for exercise? Did I exercise before? Or what do I currently exercise? Even at my highest weight, I always exercise. I never stopped exercising. Why? Because I absolutely love to exercise. Um, growing up, I was always uh, swimming competitively. I did that all throughout high school and college. And so... Um, Exercise has always been a part of my, my thing. And um, like I said, even at my highest, highest weight, I was always exercising. And maybe that's why, you know, everybody asks me, do you have loose skin? Yes, there, you do, I do have loose skin, but for the most part, I've never had a child and I've always exercised. And I exercised through when I was thin and heavy. So I don't really have a lot of loose skin. I do have it, I hide it well. Thank God for the um, undergarment industry that, mm -hmm. that, that can, you know, make things for us, that can like tighten it up. But I know some of you that have lost like 200 pounds and, you know, yeah, there's a lot of excess skin. And there's nothing wrong with going and um, having that taken care of, care of and with the plastic surgery. And in fact, one of my dearest, closest friends, Rebecca Martinez, she just did an interview with Chef AJ and Dr. Bon Mar about her plastic surgery that she did because she lost what over 250 pounds i don't remember i mean Something she lost like yeah she lost an enormous amount of weight and she had a lot of loose skin and this girl looks fabulous so i highly recommend you check out her youtube video that she did with chef aj 
um, where she talks about all that. And I think they donate the skin to burn victims. That I, I don't, don't know if that's true, that but I've I heard. Don't, I, I don't yeah. know, but I mean, <clears throat> someone like her or someone like her that has a lot, a lot, a lot of skin, I would imagine, like, that would be the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, what do you do with your juice pulp when you're done juicing? Um, you know, okay, so back in the day, I used to make crackers out of it. I used to mm -hmm. add, yeah, I used to add, uh, kind of good. it is, it's really good. I used to add flax and all that. And, and I used to make crackers out of it and I put it in the dehydrator. So we had crackers, but lately because I do it every single day, there's so much pulp. Um, I would give it to the trees and stuff, except it, it creates a lot of work for me and I don't have the time. So right now, a lot of it, it gets thrown out, which I know you guys don't want to hear, but I'm being honest with you guys. Um, and then if I'm not busy, then I will make crackers or I will make something out of it. Um, okay. And while, <laughs> while, while she's looking, I'm going to continue yeah, the episode. If you guys want to see Rebecca, that's available on Chef AJ's. YouTube. That's, yeah. That's on Chef AJ's YouTube. It's not, a, it's not up on my channel. Yeah. And it was like, Maybe like a month ago, two. Maybe about a month ago, maybe yeah. less than a month ago. But yeah, yeah if you guys want to see it. Um, somebody asked, how important <clears throat> is it to have a clean environment? Because apparently, um, you know, this person has you know a husband, children, and all that, so it's not that easy for her. For me, it was. It's very important to have a clean environment because um, I'm not that type of person where I could have one little chocolate square and then call it a day. When I know there's something here in this house, it keeps banging on my head until I go and I finish it. That's just the way my brain works. So for me, in order to be successful on this program, having a clean environment is absolutely huge. Even now, 10 years later, you come to the house, you're not going to really find anything. Are you finding anything? No. No. And I've been in her cupboards. And she's been in my cupboards. <laughs> and in fridge. fact, Chef AJ used to come and spend the night at my house <laughs> and she would always go through my cupboards and my refrigerator and my freezer. So to me, having a clean environment is, 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 is very important. Along those same lines, um, I know you're going to ask me about being abstinent, what my thoughts are on it. I think it's very important to be abstinent and the reason being the only way that I was able to be successful was by going into this program 100%. I gave it 200%. I never put one foot in this program and one foot in that program. And I followed the program exactly as it was written and as it was intended. I think for me, had I, had I done like five days of perfect eating, of no salt, no oil, no sugar, no processed foods, no flour, none of that. If I would have done that and then had a cheat day um, one day or maybe a weekend of a cheat, I, I, my taste bud would have never neuroadapted and I would have never been successful. Why? Because I, that, that food would keep pulling me back, pulling me back. So you guys, you have to make a, de a decision for yourself. How badly do you want this? And what is it going to take for you guys to do it? Now, if you put in 50% of the work, you're only going to get 50% of the result. If you're going to put in 90% of the work, why not put in that extra 10% to get 100% of the result? So if we're all, it's the beginning of the year, this is when we all make New Year's resolutions. And I know most of us always make that New Year's resolution, I'm going to get healthy and I'm going to lose my weight and I'm going to keep it off. That was mine for most of my life. But we have to make a decision. Are we in it or are we not in? And if you're going to be in, just be in 100%. Make that commitment to yourself, not to anybody else, not to me, not to your husband, not to your child. Make it for yourself. Do something for yourself. You're worth it. You are more than worth it. And you need to do this for yourself. So go in 100%. Don't be afraid. Honest to God, it, it is such a good feeling to be here now 10 years later, but just go in. And you know what? Maybe, maybe you go in a week at a time. Maybe you'll be perfect for one week 
and then say, you know what, I'm going to try it for another week. And then once you've got a month under your belt, you say, you know what, I'm going to continue for another 30 days. Then I'm going to continue for another 30 days. And before you know it, a year has gone by that you've been perfect on the way you're eating. You know, and what I mean perfect is by not having the salt, the oil, and the sugar, and the processed food, and the refined foods. I, that's what I'm talking about, you know. Um, and you can't keep beating yourself up saying, oh my God, I wasn't perfect yesterday. Okay, so you, so you, you had something. Stop blaming yourself and stop beating yourself up. Just get back on it the next day. Life happens. Things happen. You have to love yourself and you have to be patient with yourself. You know? So one of, my, the, one of the things that I hate is people say, oh, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But mm -hmm. you know what? We all get up in the morning and we all make the best effort that we can and we do the best you can. So what I'm asking you is give it your best. Go in 100% and see what's going to happen. That's, nice. my, that's, <laughs> that's my thought on that. I wasn't meaning to be preachy or lectury. <laughs> um, somebody asked, what do I eat for breakfast? I think I just answered that. Back in the day, I used to have a lot of steamed vegetables for breakfast. Um, but now, for the most part, if I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat. But I am having lately my juice in the morning, my green juice, which has no fruit. Again, it's all vegetables. So that is what I'm having. She's answering, so I'm guessing she doesn't have any questions for me, so I'm going to continue. So we've got some people who are connecting, and they're going to be accountability partners. Oh, that's, that's awesome. wonderful. I think, you know what, you guys, I had an accountability partner, and guess who it was? <laughs> Miss Erin right here. We it did was. that, and it's wonderful. And the way Erin and I worked it um, was... If I was before, before we were to put anything in our mouth, we had to take a picture of what we were going to put in our mouth and we had to send it to the other person and that other person had to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> well, if you're going to put something bad, call me. And I always told her that, call me so I can talk you off the ledge. And if I'm having something bad, I'm going to call you so you can talk me off the ledge. And that worked really great for us. Yeah, yeah, we did it for a while. We did it for a long time, yeah. and we and I think it, it works both ways. And I remember one time um, a friend of mine died unexpectedly, and that was going to send me in a tailspin. And I immediately, immediately called Chef AJ, and I called, I called John Pierre, and they talked me off the ledge. And you need to have someone like that. You need someone to talk to. And to, I think it's wonderful that you guys are connecting yeah. and you're going to be accountability partners. I think yeah. that's great. <laughs> that that awesome. made my night. So thank you guys. <laughs> that really made my night. Um, so one question was if I travel, well, not right now because of this whole COVID situation, and how do I handle food away from home? So this is where um, John Pierre taught me about the fruit and vegetable days, and this is how it really helps me when I travel. When I travel, I will take food on the plane with me. Um, one thing that I always take, and you guys, I talk about this all the time, is my Pampered Chef uh, micro cooker. Why do I take that? Because I always get a room with a refrigerator and a microwave and I can always put my potatoes and my broccoli and everything in there and I can steam it and I can cook it. Before I had the micro cooker, I would take my Instant Pot everywhere I went. But thank God, I, you know, thanks to BJ Swingle, she, she introduced me to this and this is a lifesaver and it's much lighter, it's not as heavy as the Instant Pot, so I take that with me and I will make my own food. Um, now, I have gone to resorts like in Mexico and you know there's always a buffet and there's always something so when I get there I always tell them hey this is the way I eat can you guys do this I have a you know I'm deathly allergic to x y and z and if they cannot make me anything I know in my head that I'm going to be okay why because I can always find fresh fruits and fresh vegetables that's easy. I, I know I can do that. Um, do I go to restaurants? Yes, I will go to restaurants. I still like going out with my friends. I still like enjoy going out with them. 
I will always pre-eat before I go. And what do I pre-eat? I usually have, you know, vegetables or something. I have on occasion, don't laugh at me because I think you've done this too. I have on occasion taken a potato with me. I, you know, having a potato in my purse <laughs> and I've taken it to the restaurants and then I'll pull it out and my friends will just die laughing. Um, I have on occasion not eaten anything. I have. I've gone and I've gotten some herbal tea and I'm fine. And to be honest with you guys, skipping a meal, nothing's going to happen. It's okay to skip a meal. You know, you, you don't have to. And I, and I don't go to a restaurant because of the food. I'm going because I want to be with my friends and I enjoy their company and I want to be with them. So for me to have a cup of herbal tea and they're eating, like I said, I don't really pay attention to what they're eating. So don't ask me what they were eating. Um, it's completely okay. But if I do go to a restaurant, they all, they're always very attentive to make sure that I go someplace, that they go someplace that there's food for me. And the things I look for are, can they make me some steamed vegetables with no butter, no oil, no salt? And they usually can. You just have to ask for it. Um, can I get a raw salad? Can I get some fresh fruit on there? So that's what I do. Or sometimes we go to a sushi restaurant because they will have steamed edamame and you can tell them to keep the salt off of it. And you can get steamed brown rice. And they can make you a veggie roll with the steamed brown rice and just vegetables and it's absolutely delicious. So yes, don't, don't deprive yourself. You just, you just have to learn to navigate how to go to a restaurant and look at their menu really well and see what you can put together and just be very courteous and nice to the um, waiter and say, look, I have, I'm deaf. Okay. So I lie sometimes. Um, I say that I'm deathly, this is the only lie I say, that I'm deathly allergic to oil, any kind of oil, even olive oil, even the best brand of olive oil. Um, and I don't have my EpiPen with me, so please don't, don't, don't bring it. Um, and so they're very cautious. They take food allergies really seriously. They really do. So yeah, yeah it's not a problem. Yeah, I used to bring a small bottle of vinegar to a restaurant with me. So I yeah. could order a salad and have vinegar. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, <clears throat> it's, it, it works. Um, and if you're ever in the Vegas area. Oh, yeah. If you're ever <laughs> in the Vegas area, thank you, Erin, for bringing that up. There's a great restaurant outside of the Strip close to the airport. It's, called, it's an Italian restaurant, Panavino. And our dear friend. <laughs> he is... Vincenzo. Yeah, Vincenzo. He is so cute. He's yeah, a sweet, he, sweet, sweet person. He's a sweet, sweet guy. He's a great guy. Um, but Vincenzo is the general manager of that restaurant. And he eats like us guys. He eats the McDougal way. He eats the no salt, no oil, no sugar. So going to that restaurant, he can pre he, they, they have it on the menu now. They've got like two pages of a menu completely geared to the way we eat. So if you're ever in Vegas, make sure you check him out and tell him that I recommended you guys to go there. Um, he will take care of you like your family. But the food, the food is delicious, right? The food right? is so and good. It's the best restaurant I've ever it eaten is. at. And, and it's a little bit decadent. Yeah, so I go there for my birthday because I just want to be pampered and treated. And yes, I may have a little slightly higher caloric dense food. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I'm totally okay with it. Um, somebody said... Um, asked a question about your breakfast so it's not a vegetable smoothie it's just a vegetable juice excuse me um yes it is a it's not a smoothie it's just a juice and i run it through my champion juicer next question did i ever get any resistance from friends and family no can't say that i did did anyone ever give you a hard time about losing weight saying, oh, you look too skinny. Well, yeah, I get that right now, too. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have, and I just say, well, thank you. You know, I, well, what do you want me to tell them? My, <laughs> it, my body will stop losing when my body decides to stop losing. Yeah. Now, did I lose some friends because I lost weight? Yes. But the friends that I've gained along the way, especially I consider you guys my plant-based family, I consider you guys more friends than a lot of my own friends because we all love and support one another. 
that's what a friendship is all about. So yes, yeah. I did lose some friends, and you may lose some friends along the way. But if they're listen, guys, if if you're gonna lose friends because of the way you're eating, they're not really yeah. your friends. They're not. They're so not friends, no. let them go out and don't let the door hit them on the way out. Yeah. Adios. You don't you don't need that. You you don't. You'll see to some people when you're losing weight. They're jealous. They, yeah, and they'll say, oh, you don't need to lose weight. Here's yeah. some really oh. bad food for you. Oh, <laughs> so here, that, here thank I brought you. you a donut. Thank you for bringing so that up. there are people who will try to bring sabotage, you down. Yeah. Sabotage your diet. And I'm so glad she brought this up because this reminded me of a story when I was living in Los Angeles. Um, I had, I, I love entertaining and I love having people over and I only make our food, right? And it's so much fun for me to introduce people that don't eat like us to try our food. So I remember one night I had everybody at my house and a friend of mine called and said, Hey, I, um, I'm at Whole Foods. What can I bring you? And I said, absolutely nothing. I told you guys, you don't need to bring anything. I'm fine. I don't need it. And she's like insisting that she wants to bring something. So finally I got fed up and I said, fine, go buy me some flowers. Because guess what? I love flowers and it's not going to hurt me, right? Do you know what she walked in with? Cake or something. A vegan chocolate cake. Okay. <laughs> now granted, it was a little one, right? But do I need a vegan chocolate cake? No, I don't need it. My friends, they want it. Not really. I had plenty of, you know, I had made my own dessert. And so... I think she was the only one that actually had a piece that night and literally she had a very small piece. So she was the last person to leave so I boxed it up because I kept the box and everything and I said by the way why don't you take this home and enjoy it with your family and she goes no 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 why don't you keep it you enjoy it. I said look with all due respect and I love you dearly I don't want it I really don't. I said and the minute you walk out that door, I'm going to throw it in the trash. Well, she didn't believe me. The worst thing you could do is challenge me because I like a good challenge. And so she said, you'll never throw that in the trash. I said, I won't. I said, I'm giving you a last opportunity. Take it. Take it home. I really don't like wasting food. I really don't want to throw it in the trash. But if you're not going to take it, I will throw it in the trash. Well, she said no. So what I did with it, I took the cake, I put it in a, in a plastic bag, I tied it up. The trash chute was next to the elevator. So I said, I'm going to walk you to the elevator because the trash chute is there. She goes, you're not. I said, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> so as I opened the trash chute, I said, you got one more shot. She goes, no, I don't want it. And boom, it went. It went. Look, guys, I know they mean well. And they're going to say, oh, but I made this just for you. And, I, and they have. People have, have brought me things. And I will take it from them. Because I, the last thing I want to do is hurt their feelings. Now, my friend, she's okay. She knows how I am, my personality. But if it's someone that I don't really know, and they, they're going out of their way, and they're trying to be nice, and they're bringing me something, I will accept it. But I will tell them that I cannot have it at this time. But I will have it for later. And I've done that because there's people around here that bring me things that I can't have. But I've never once told them, you know, that now they know how I eat, so now I think now they're going to stop. Well, they, are, they have stopped because now they're bringing me fresh fruit. But before they were, they were doing that, and I used to give it to someone that could either eat it, if I, and if I didn't find someone that could have it, then that's when I threw it out. But you have to be kind and gentle to these people that, that you know, say I, I made this especially for you. Just lie. Just tell them that, thank you so much. I'm going in for a colonoscopy tomorrow. I can't eat it right now. I'll have it later. Just make up something, but don't hurt their feelings. And then at an appropriate time, sit them down and explain to them what your dietary needs are. But don't ever be mean to someone, unless you want to be mean to someone, Which, but don't. Just be nice. Just be nice. <laughs> Being nice takes you much further along. <laughs> All right. Okay, so somebody asked me if I batch cook. I don't really <clears throat> batch cook. What I do make, a, a, well, not, I don't know. I do and I don't. I will always have soup in the freezer because I always want to have it because mom and I like to eat a lot of soup. So once a week, I will make soup. The salad, I typically make every day. 
Um, but sometimes you'll make a big salad that'll last like two days. Oh yeah, so. yeah. My salads will typically last two or three days. And then I may make um, some quinoa. I make with lentils. Yeah, quinoa with lentils. That's it's her really favorite. Good, guys. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> quinoa with lima beans. Yeah. Or fava beans. Fava, fava beans. beans. Fava beans. <laughs> so there are things that I may make, but for the most part, I don't really batch cook. I am so impressed with Tammy Kramer um, with her batch cooking because she is like so organized. She's <laughs> on it. She's got everything ready to go. But I only have the one refrigerator, so it's a little hard for me to do that. I, I just can't. I don't, I don't have the room. I mean, if you open the freezer right now, it is packed, and it's because I've got all the frozen vegetables in there because I eat a lot of organic frozen vegetables, and it's got soups that I have made, and, you know, I've got it ready to go in there, so at any time I can take it out and defrost it. But for the most part, I'm not a huge batch cook like you've seen me I've done a video we did a video on uh, how to do quick stir fries with no recipe guys and all the, in fact we're having that for dinner tonight where I'm just going to take stuff out of the freezer and I'm going to make a stir fry and call it a day and that's it so I like to eat on the fly I would say a lot of the time so I don't know I don't know your thoughts on batch cooking I've never even asked you about you think about batch cooking <laughs> I do. I'll usually make something for the week just because it's easier. Yeah, but, but you all might make a soup or something like yeah, some kind of like a base. Sunday, right? I'll make something. Um, like this week, we did a big instant pot of bean black beans. Did you and make the Cuban black beans? I did. Oh, those are so good. Oh, there you go. She did. Those um, are so and good. then I did um, like a big, big thing of brown rice, and then I shredded a head of cabbage and chopped up a bunch of mushrooms and then I would cook the mushrooms fresh every day. Yeah, I do but too. I make do like a little mushroom. bowl salad kind of thing out yeah. of it. But so I'll, I'll usually do like a big pot of something. But but see, if you guys go to Nutmeg Notebook and if you and if you follow Tammy, she does a beautiful job with her batch yeah, cooking. Yeah, I'm no Tammy in the kitchen. Yeah, I, it, no, I don't mind cooking. It's just I don't have the time. I have a full-time job, guys. I'm a real estate agent. So I really don't have the time. If I had the time yeah. and if I had another refrigerator, I absolutely would be doing it. But I, one, I don't have the time. And two, I don't have the extra refrigerator because you got to store this someplace. Yeah. When you when you're when you're batch cooking, you really have to place it someplace. You got you got anything for What's me? What's your favorite recipe for guests? Okay, that's Is one, that of, one of them. <laughs> What's my favorite recipe? I like falafels. Those ones are good. That I have I did a whole um, YouTube on that. So the recipe I'll share is the it. link for that. that share, one was share the so link for good. um share the link for the falafels. Share the link for the tacos, the black bean tacos. Um, um, so those are two. It just depends on my on my guests what they like. A lot of times, um, they want Persian food, and we do have some Persian recipes on the website and on YouTube. So a lot of times will be Persian recipes. But typically, I, my guests when they come over, they're like, "Oh, make us whatever you're gonna make yourself." I mean, they look the food. If it tastes good, they're gonna love it. Um, so what else? I can't think of my own foods right now. You make the quinoa, either with lentils or yeah, you make the that quinoa, a lot in a big yeah. salad. Yeah. Um, what else oh, you, you know, you know what we're I'm probably going to be making soon because I haven't made it in a while, and I and I saw them in the market, like portobello mushrooms. Do you remember I used to make the stuffed portobello mushrooms? Oh yeah. Oh my God, those That's are so Dr. good. Doctor Lowenda was here. Doctor Lowenda, when yeah. he was here, we made those, and um, those ones were good. And I think that was the last time I made it. Shame on me for not making it. But I was at the market the other day, and I saw the por fresh portobello mushrooms, and they looked like, oh, I gotta make that. Um, so that's another one because you can make that in the air fryer and it's delicious. And if you don't have an air fryer, it's okay. You can make it in the oven. It's not a big deal. Another one that you've made a few times that I've been here is the mushroom soup. Oh yeah, that's, that that's a really winner. Good. That's the definite. Everyone thing. seems to really like yeah, that. Yeah, the mushroom, the creamy mushroom bisque, that's another I don't know, everything one. she makes is good. <laughs> well, she's a little partial <laughs> to it. Um, okay, so we answered that. We've answered that. Oh, somebody <laughs> asked, do you eat nuts and seeds? 
Um, and did I, if, did I eat nuts and seeds during weight loss? The answer to that would be no. I did not eat it during weight loss at all. Now, flax seeds, I will grind that up and I will put that on my salad or on my soup. Or I may, my mom has me taking it like a teaspoon and I just take it and I just eat it. Because it actually tastes really good. Um, so she flax. She that too. Well, she made yeah. you do it, but it was tasty. <laughs> Yeah, no, it wasn't as gross as I thought it was. No, be. It, was it was really was good. good. It was really, it's really, really I was good. Thinking, I don't know about this. Yeah, so, um, but nuts, no, I, during my weight loss phase, I did no nuts, absolutely none. Even right now, I don't do too much. And in fact, I've recently, within the last two years, become allergic to walnuts. So I don't even have any of that. And I try not to eat a lot of nuts, but I will have the, um, the flax seeds. So yeah, that I, I do like hemp seed. I'll put like a little sprinkle sometimes and you on know, my salad. I have not, hemp, it's not very much. But I bought hemp seed and it's in the fridge and I keep yeah. forgetting about it. No, I, yeah, I think it has a nice taste to it. They for, both do. Yeah. So no, don't be afraid to do and it. And then there's black seed too. I don't, is that tech? That's a seed. That's a seed. Right. Um, somebody wanted to know what supplements I take and, and what are the dosages. So yeah, let me see. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. <clears throat> vitamin D. Well, I'll, I'll just talk about it. So I take vitamin C, and this is the 1500 milligram. It's by Liposomal. All the vitamins that I take are on my Amazon page, and I think uh, we've got a link to that um, in the show notes. So if you go to my Amazon page, you can see the vitamin C that I take. I take vitamin D3, and I like the products by Pure Encapsulations. I learned about Pure Encapsulations. Um, when I was at True North Health Center, and that's what they sell up there. So I take the vitamin D3 by them, and again, that's on my Amazon page. I take a B12, I take a zinc, and both of those, all of, the, all of these are on my Amazon um, affiliate page. But the vitamin D that I take is 2,000, but that's what works for me. The, um, the B12, I take 1,000. And the zinc, I think, is like 30. But like I said, those are, those are the vitamins I take right now. Um, I don't take really much, much more than that. So Did you say B12? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So vitamin C, no, vitamin C, vitamin B12, vitamin D, and zinc. Those are what I'm taking right now. You did get a nice comment from Peace Channel. Thank you for all you are doing for world peace and for our planet. Peace and shalom. Ah, shalom. Thank you so much. So somebody asked if I eat tofu. Yeah, once in a while. I know it's processed. I try to make sure that I buy it organic, the non-GMO. Um, I think um, I like edamame. And in fact, I have some edamame <laughs> that I, I made for tonight because I'm going to do a stir fry and I'm going to add edamame to it. Um, and that's what they make tofu out of. Yeah, and, and so <laughs> I'm not afraid of tofu, and I don't think you guys should be afraid of tofu, especially. Um, but I have tofu scramble, and there's a, there's a great recipe um, on my channel, uh, how to make my tofu scramble. So I will have that maybe once or twice a year. I don't have it often. I think I eat the edamame more than I eat the actual tofu block. Yeah, once in a while I will have it. There's nothing wrong with it. Do you eat you eat tofu? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not, not like I, I, I eat um tempeh too. Okay, so I haven't graduated to tempeh yet. I think I actually like tempeh better than tofu, but I know a lot of people don't so, like it. Here's so. what we're gonna do guys, because I've never <laughs> had it and I've never, never made it. it. No. Oh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Aaron. <laughs> Come in the kitchen, and I'll stand back, and we're going to have Erin make tempeh for us and see what she... I think that's... You really make it. You just cut it up. No, <laughs> you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna come and teach us how to do tempeh. I'm surprised you haven't had tempeh. Yeah. I think I may have had it um, at True North in one of the recipes, but yeah. I don't remember. It's heartier. It's like... No, but I think but. I think I think our audience would also agree that they would love to see you cook in the kitchen, and you're going to be making tempeh for me. Uh -huh. I think that's a great idea, guys. <laughs> I'm glad we came up with that. 
Here's a comment from Jesse. Anytime I think of Shada's food, I think of great color combinations and great flavors. Oh, you're so sweet. And then Thank she you. added, and I always think of pomegranates when I think of Shada. Oh, Shada's. big time. <laughs> big time. Pomegranate. Oh, you guys know how I feel about pomegranates. It's my Absolutely. favorite thing in the world. It is. <laughs> if, if they ask me, what, what do you want for your last meal? I want pomegranates. pomegranates. <laughs> Somebody asked me, how can I make my potatoes taste better? So, there's a lot of sauces that you can put on your potatoes. You can air fry your potatoes. Um, something happens to the texture of the fries when you air fry them. You can add garlic and onion powder to your um, fries and put them in the air fryer and that'll make it a lot more tastier. I have a great nacho cheese sauce that is delicious that you can pour on top of your vegetables and on top of your um, made, um, potatoes. Those are the, the chili cheese fries. Or oh, I made like chili that. cheese fries, exactly. Those are really good. And so what I did for the chili cheese fries, now that she brought it up, um, <laughs> I went ahead and made the potatoes and I cut them into steak fries and then I air fried them. I made my Cuban black beans in the instant pot and then I made my cheese sauce separately and then what I did is I put the, uh, the, the french fries on the plate and then I poured the uh, Cuban black beans on top of that and then I put my um, cheese sauce on top of that and then I added scallions and tomatoes and salsa and oh we had a field day that, that was good. good and in fact why haven't we done that in a long time either I know, I know there's so many good recipes and I forget about it and I go to my typical meal of just having a salad with a potato or a salad <laughs> with black beans I go salad back to the basics yeah. or salad and soup right now it's soup yeah right now I'm totally hung up on soup because the weather's cold yeah so cold for us well yeah and you, and you, you people <laughs> back east yes we are wimps out here <laughs> I guess my mom and dad were snowed in, so I'm from the Seattle area, and they had a really bad snow winter, um, this winter, and they were snowed in their house, and they couldn't leave for almost a week. Oh my gosh. Because they didn't have a four-wheel drive car. So somebody asked me, what can I do to make my simple food look better on my plate? Use a pretty plate. Add some greenery to it. It's just basically, you know, styling it. Otherwise, I'm sure the food that you're making is absolutely delicious and there's, you know. Yeah, or add some like cilantro or something. Yeah, add well. cilantro. It herbs. Look a little prettier. Um, what else could you do? Jada makes everything look pretty. I don't know about that, but. <laughs> All right. When so I would text you my pictures, I'd try and make them look pretty because I knew you were going to see them. Your, your yeah. food always looks good. <laughs> okay, so somebody asked me. I'm eating vegetables for breakfast, used to have oatmeal. Am I hurting myself for not eating starches? Should I eat them even if I'm not hungry? So there's nothing wrong with having oatmeal for breakfast. And in fact, if you want, you could add your vegetables to your oatmeal, combine the two, and you're getting the best of both worlds. Um, I'm not a believer that you should eat if you're not hungry. Yeah, if you're not hungry, don't if eat. If you're not hungry, know. don't eat. But your, your body usually knows. But you should be eating your starch. And so yeah. I don't know what you so mean wait by... Till you, wait till you're hungry and then you can have oatmeal. Yeah, I mean, if you want to have... Oh, I, and I don't know what she means by starch. Or she meaning, should she not have potatoes? Should she not have rice? Which you can have all of those. Well, it might be... Um, and you need your you starch. You want your veggies first or something. Well, I want thinking. people to eat yeah. their veggies first and then eat their starch, but I think you're going to hurt yourself by not eating starches. And the way you're going to hurt yourself is you're going to be hungry. Yeah. You can't survive on just eating vegetables all day long. I mean, you can for a day or two. You, you can, not to say that you can't, but you want to have that, that comfortable tummy that that's, like, has that full sensation. Yeah, because so one of the should... worst feelings is feeling too full. Too full or I too think, hungry? At least. Yeah, or too hungry. Or too hungry. But. So I think you should be eating your starch. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but um, if you're still hungry from the day before, then I would just wait till you're hungry. Yeah, eat, 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 your... eat when you're hungry. Don't, don't, don't try to force yourself to eat. At least that's what I think, but 
I don't know. And somebody said oat groats is a good option too. Oat groats is wonderful. Thanks to Sharon McRae who, who, who got me hooked up on, on oat groats. <laughs> Those are delicious, man. In fact, my mom made some last night and I love adding that to my salads. Yeah, and it's if you guys haven't had oat groats, it's the strangest phenomenon, at least to me. Because <laughs> it looks and feels like rice but it tastes like oatmeal. Yeah, and it's got a nutty <laughs> flavor. And yeah. if you go to my website, I've got recipes on how to do it in the Instant Pot and all that. So somebody asked us how we're celebrating tonight. Woohoo! Well, we are Party. celebrating tonight. <laughs> and what we're going to have for dinner is, of course, I've got a, a big salad already prepared in the refrigerator. Um, I don't have anything in here yet because we're going to be making the stir fry once we're done. Um, but that's how we're celebrating tonight. What do you Again, do for some... a 10 year anniversary? Huh? What do you do for a 10 year anniversary? I have no idea. My, my food hasn't changed for 10 just years. Keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> exactly. And for dessert, what are we having? Tangerines and oranges. So that's, that's how we're celebrating tonight. Um, and then somebody asked me, what are some of my favorite foods? That, that from my favorite recipes. Pomegranate. Well, well, yeah, hello. I think they're sick of hearing me talk about pomegranate. <laughs> um, but so here's my top 10 recipes that I, abs I personally love. So and you, can, you can maybe do your top 10. I love the red lentil sweet potato soup, mm. the family harvest salad, mm -hmm. the pineapple unfried rice, um, if you go to the quick weight loss meal live 57, you can see how I made uh, the stir fries um, that's, that actually we're going to have tonight for dinner. My burrito nourish bowl, I absolutely love that one. Uh, my black bean corn salad, my Cuban black beans, the mushroom bisque recipe, the nacho cheese sauce, and the vegetable bisque soup. Those are my top 10. So okay. I didn't hear any complaints from, <laughs> from uh, Aaron, which is a good thing. <laughs> Here's my, t I don't know if I have top 10, but I'll say my tops. The hearty lentil stew. Yeah. I'm looking at our videos. That one is so good, you guys. I should make that. Maybe I'll make yeah, that Yeah, you should weekend. make that. It is so good, for, especially in winter. If you haven't tried it, make it. Um, the other one, what was, oh, forbidden rice sushi. I, I keep forgetting that. that I mm. love. I love the sushi. Um, what was my? I mean, I always make the Cuban black beans. That's like one of my. I, I make that a lot, and Josh. That's one of Josh's favorites. That's a go-to for her. They're all really good, and I love the quinoa. You know what? <laughs> I keep bringing it up, but it's just you know, you know what's so good. good. Uh, you know what's good for right now that the weather is cold is the there's a recipe. Mm -hmm that Aaron and I made together about a year ago. It's called the Hocus Pocus, oh. <laughs> the Hocus Pocus Witches Stew. And it's got all these different beans and textures and it's really delicious. And if you want to see what I look like, I'm in that video. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I forgot to share with you my before and after picture. This is my before oh. where I'm holding a martini. Some it's so fancy drink there. Yeah, it's really cute. AJ took a picture of me in my bikini and then put the one with that. And she calls it from martini to bikini, which <laughs> I thought was very clever. And here's another before and after. And if you go on my website, you can see more before and after pictures. Do you